Don't take it personal. It's just comedy. Live at the barber shop. I told you before, we back here with a lot of familiar faces, man. Got my boy Talent. I done watched this dude grow up. Yo, let these people know where you from, baby. First of all, money earned in Mount Vernon. What you up? know what I mean? Murderville, we up in there, Four what Square. Up? All day, you know the barbershop is real when they let you come in with the brewski. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? When you can rock the beer in the barbershop, then you live from the barbershop. Right. Yep. That's what we do. Yo, you've been a funny dude forever, man. How long have you been man. doing this? Since I dropped out of school, man, ninth, 10th grade. Mm -hmm. You know, when you drop out, you forget what grade it was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's one of those, though. It's nine or 10. <laughs> Miss Pellegrino, whatever mm -hmm. class that was, Miss Pellegrino. Because I told her, my math teacher, I told her, I said, you know, it's my last test. Okay. She said, what? <laughs> what about the SATs? I said, I'll pop the SATs. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? And I got out of there and then stopped making money doing comedy, man. I ain't never took a math test again. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I like that. We don't need no math test, huh? One plus one is? Two, sometimes. <laughs> In the hood, 1.7. You did. You know what I'm saying? Because you always got to take a short. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You want them to come back, then you get them for two. That's three. So, you know, that's something, man. Yeah, we're we going to talk about that in the back of the barbershop. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you're a funny dude, man. You've been doing this a long time. If you could say, all right, this is what I'm running with right here, what kind of comic would you be? Uh, the kind of comic I am is uh, I, I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, had a, I had a conversation with somebody today and was like, well, you know, how do you keep it fresh? Like, how do you say something that the younger people can understand and the older people understand? I said, if you talk about life, right? The mm -hmm. one thing about life is that's the one thing we all got in common. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're 16 or 66. Mm -hmm. If you talk about, you generalize life, mm -hmm. not just current events, not just the, the latest jeans mm -hmm. or, you know, jacket or song that's out. When you stay away from that stuff, you don't date yourself. Okay. You know what I mean? When you mm -hmm. talk about stuff like men, women, gender, relationships, kids, all that, this stuff has been going on since the beginning of the time. Like, mm -hmm. that's regular human material. Like, we're never going to not be human. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you're always going to be relatable because I tell you, the biggest laugh you ever could get is from what we call relatability. Okay. The more you relate, the bigger the laugh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That means somebody been through that. Mm -hmm about to go through that, know somebody that been through that, so they relate to a high level, your laugh is bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say stuff that's just you, you gotta really be able to pinpoint a great picture mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll lose them. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Steve Harvey was a lot funnier than he is now. Not that anything happened other than his circumstances changed, so when he talked, he may not, people may not relate as much as they used to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you do a rich man's joke, your audience, the majority ain't rich. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta bring it in layman's tone. Like we always say, tell it to them like they do. Mm -hmm. You can't tell it to them as you know it because, you know, yeah, you know, you know how it is with 10,000 square feet driveway. No, I don't, nigga. Nah. I know how a pissy elevator is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you talking, you gotta relate. I don't care what the topic is. So mm -hmm. I try to keep it real general. Okay. You know, so that keeps you standing the test of time, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So you say keep it general, but how do you do that when you change demographics? Well, demographics don't matter. So, like, let's say something like, if I'm talking about breakups, mm -hmm. right? Do, is that going to matter if I switch to a white crowd and a black crowd? Mm -hmm. White people break up, black people break up. Okay. This is what I mean by generalization. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if I talk about, you know, my mom's cooking. Every every person can relate to their mom's cooking, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Their mom's cook, and they can relate to the cooking. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, mm -hmm. Asian. This is generalization. Okay. You know, so that's that's what I do, like the general material. So, you know, like, mater I would say, like, I focus on relationships a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being the person I am, my lifestyle, you know, I didn't I didn't have a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't have, by default. Mm -hmm. I'm not even a casting over. You know, some niggas are nice. Mm -hmm. They go get the girls. They, they chalk them, you know, chalk them on the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. That's 25, that's 30. I, I don't get my girls on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cocoa butter. Nigga slipping pussy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My last 10 pieces fell off a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I know your son is doing comedy. Yes. Was that learned or did he just just have it naturally? Well, that was, I think, that was him doing what he wanted to do. I didn't, I didn't touch him, I didn't teach him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, really how that went about was one day I was on the road and my son was doing his music first, you know, mm -hmm. which is in my background as well. I was heavily into music before comedy. Okay. So I knew he was doing the music. He was working with Prince Paul, Cartoon Network. He had a lot of stuff, video games. He had a lot of behind the scenes mm -hmm. music stuff popping off. He had gotten to creating the videos and all that. You know, I was proud of him. Mm -hmm. And then one day I'm, I wake up on the road 
and I, I see a text from him, so when I see it's a link, mm -hmm. so I'm automatically assuming it's a link to one of his a new video or song he did. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna check it out. I'm half sleep. I'm gonna check it out. Hit the link, and it goes to a comedy club and mm -hmm. somebody introducing him, mm -hmm. and he goes up, and I'm half sleep in the bed, and I'm looking at the joint, and I actually it's about six and a half minutes of material. He talking shit about me, but mm -hmm. it's funny. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. It's his perspective. It's raw, but it's funny as hell. And I laugh three times. You know, looking at the joint, and I'm like, yo, dude, it's funny because I just watched Chappelle's The Double Special and didn't laugh at nothing. Mm -hmm. And then here is my, my son, six, seven minutes, get up there and talk some smack. And it was like, I'm in the bath, in the bed, chuckling three times. I'm like, so I hit him back. I was like, I hated to tell him, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, dude, you, you, you funny. I said, mm -hmm. but. I said, how you feel about it? Are you doing it just because I do it and you've seen if you could do it? Or mm. he said, no, nah, I really love it. I want to do it. I was like, all right, well, you do a year by yourself before I even tell you anything or you ask me anything. Okay. And if you stick out a year, that means you're really serious about it and you want to do it. Then I jump in double dutch mm. and, you know, give you, put my hands on and show you what it is and give you the pointers of the do's and the don'ts. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, he can't have a better teacher. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this game here, like, I was on the phone, you know, with <coughs> School Lover, shout out to School Lover, mm, Big Daddy Keynes, dude, he's about to start comedy. Mm. So we had a nice, long conversation, and I'm trying to tell him, and he was like, yo, what, what is your, your end game? What's your goal? I said, dude, my goal is to be the funniest motherfucker out. Like, that's <coughs> that's what I fight for. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, but you already are. Like, mm -hmm. you ain't cocky about it, but you already are. I said, dude, it don't matter what I think. It's about my peers knowing mm -hmm. that shit. That's respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We could call ourselves whatever every day. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm the king of this. I'm the, the best of that. Boom, boom. It don't matter shit unless you walk around your everyday life and people treat you like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said, you, you know how people came to Africa and captured tribes of people and, and got to speak to the kings? Mm -hmm. It's because the kings were easy to find because the kings is the one they elevate up. The people hold the king up. Mm -hmm. So when you look through the crowd, you go, he the king. Why? Because they got him up here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't come off the, the ocean shores and mm -hmm. who the king, somebody come through the bush, yeah, I, I'm the king of Africa. Like, mm -hmm. or, prove it. You mm -hmm. are here by, the, ain't nobody paying you no mind. You're mm -hmm. the king. The king, the people are gonna king you. The, okay. the people are gonna recognize. So my peers, and don't get me wrong, many of them respect it and move accordingly. And then you got some that's rebellious and abrasive. Nah, he ain't the best. I'm, I'm, I'm still going at him. I wanna go at him. And I welcome that. Mm -hmm. You should be one to come at me. You know what I mean? Because. I got that heat. How else are you going to judge your heat if you don't put it against other Fahrenheit? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm that scorcher. People see me walking the comedy club. It's, a, it's an inside joke with people in comedy that's close to me when we mm -hmm. go to L.A. Because a lot of my comedy friends is in L.A. and shit, and they working on their shit and everything. As soon as they see me pop in the comedy club, the shit gets shook. Mm -hmm. Why is he here? Mm -hmm. what's, what's going on? They want to know, why, what, what, what's special going on? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, yeah, man, I'm getting a beer. Maybe do five minutes. Okay. Well, I'm not major. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's the respect I want. Mm -hmm. I want that. You should kind of fear what's what's potentially better than you mm -hmm. because that's how you get better. Okay. I did the same thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, I mean, that's it, man. When I walked in the comedy clubs, back in the day for me, it was the Monteria Ivies, you know what I mean? Uh, them cats, you know, my man Cortez, God bless the dead. These dudes was, you know, they walked in the room, and you know you had to be on your shit. Okay. You know, and that's what challenged you and make you get to the next level. Mm -hmm. As a host, Monteria Ivy. Mm -hmm. You know, as a comic, like Solid Brothers, like other comics named a bunch of people. There's so many people that people don't know about that's fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've been telling dudes for my whole, I've been doing this shit 28 years. Okay. I've been telling dudes for the last 20 some years who love a Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, Chappelle's cool, man, but... I said, he's a, first of all, he's a quiet taste. He's mm -hmm. great. He's an acquired taste. Everybody ain't going to like him or love him. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you like Chappelle, man, you got to learn about Tony Woods. Okay. That's Tony Woods running with it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's running with a Tony Woods. And you know what he did when he got the Kennedy Award? He finally took time out and recognized Tony Woods. He said, without Tony Woods, there would be no Chappelle. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that type of thing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to have, everybody needs that fire, Fahrenheit put to brace their fire against to figure it out. Who gives you your fire? Well, right now, right now is anybody that people may think is that thing. Mm -hmm. Again, I got to make everybody believe. Okay. So when I walk in the room, I'm just talent. I'm talent until I'm next to something with a bigger fire. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily on stage, but in name. Mm -hmm. I'm talent. I walk in the room and Damon Wayans is called it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just throwing names out. Uh, you know, some D-Ray or whatever, whoever, you know, fire, 
quick or whatever. They're in the room, and I come in there, and it's like, okay, down here, whatever. But when we hit that stage, all of us, mm -hmm. and you come down at the end of the show, now all that energy changes. Okay. Now it's like, oh, talent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what brings me my fight. Okay. You know, to come in the room, and, you know, especially when you nobody's expecting it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's expecting it. You know? You've been doing this a long time. Um, how could we ever get back to like the Def Jams and stuff like that? Like uh, that nature, yeah, it's coming. The big platforms. It's coming. Everything is moving full circle. If you've been paying attention to TV and streaming and shows and programming, it's coming full circle. So everything we live through is being revamped and uh, regurgitated out. Mm -hmm. So it's starting with sitcoms. You know, we went dry on black sitcoms. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming out. You know, it started with black movies. We went dry. Now mm -hmm. we got all this black movies coming out. Mm -hmm. Same thing with comedy. You know, it went dry. Now, even BET Plus, they're bringing back comic view. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? HBO's doing more specials. Showtime's doing more special shit. Netflix is becoming the home of comedy, and mm -hmm. that's the number one streaming source. So it's all coming back out. So all of us are putting our caps on. Those of us who lived it are coming back with the newer version. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I got a show uh, called Yo Cannabis, you know, comedy which is, you know, we make it funny in 420. Okay. So it's a Def Jam flavor, but mm -hmm. weed-based. Okay. You know, okay. Cats is coming from that weed background. Mm -hmm. And you got all types. So some of us are calling themselves weed's head. Mm -hmm. Some niggas are what we call stoners. Mm -hmm. Whatever your flavor is, some people just do edibles. It don't matter. Okay. Or some people ain't even getting high, but be around people getting high, mm -hmm. and they got to take on it. So that's a Def Jam flavor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The New York Kings of Comedy, we take that this year. That's a, a ultimate, like a, a, a all-star level of, of Def Jam. These mm -hmm. headliners, Rob Stapleton, Mark Vieira, Capone, and yours truly, Talent, make up the New York Kings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's going to be a tape. So this is all Def Jam flavor being regurgitated. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We made our bones, you know, respect due to people that made those those pathways, and now we regurgitate it in a new 2020 okay. and plus way. You know what I mean? So doing comedy, it's a lot of separation. You might have to do is as hot, right. some not. If a person is coming into the comedy game, what kind of advice would you give them? Same interview. You'll see me say the same thing every time, man. Uh, if you're new coming to the comedy game, first of all, be serious, don't disrespect it. Uh, second of all, the best thing you do for yourself is stay on stage. And I mean, it sounds simple when people, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get on stage. Well, I'm talking about stay on stage. All you new cats, you got it a way that we didn't have it when we started. Mm -hmm. We was lucky to get on the stage once a month, twice a month. You got it, it's so many venues, it's so set up, it's so formatted, you don't have to fight those battles no more. So you should be on stage 10 times a week if you can, seven times a week, six times a week. And it ain't about the money. Mm -hmm. Don't lose focus. A lot of my comrades who ain't relevant no more is because they got to a point where they, they won't come out their house if it wasn't a dollar involved. Mm -hmm. It's your craft. Okay. It don't it don't mean nothing to come out and jump on stage for ten minutes for free because you're better than your craft every time you're on stage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You get that you get that money back on the back end. You feel what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you'll be a better comedian commanding a higher price. So don't stay in the house, oh, I was going to go out there, but he didn't want to give me $50, so mm -hmm. he, he didn't want to pay me. You hurting yourself. You ain't hurting him. That little 50 bucks ain't hurting him. What's going to hurt is you. Some dude going to pass you because why? He was on stage three more times that week. Mm -hmm. Now he funnier than you. Stay on stage. Stay on stage, baby. Yo, I ain't going to front. I saw you perform a lot, you know what I'm saying, right. growing up. Because it was just that, that Mount Vernon thing. It's just like you like to stay with your people. It seemed like each time I see you perform, you change your show up a little different where you get a lot of comments. You see him perform, you then one time you see them every time. I know what you're saying, because they're not thinking outside the box. The original formula of stand-up comedy is to get a, a, a set mm. and do that same exact thing a million times. Yeah. To tighten it as possible. And I, I hate to say it, not to be, you know, race bashing or nothing. That was invented by the white side. Okay. by mainstream comedy, mm -hmm. so it works for them. Mm -hmm. It don't work for us. Mm -hmm. You know why it works for them? Because a white comic can go to 10 stages and they don't have the same type of fan base we do when they start now. Black folks, when, when they like something though, mm -hmm. they will go support it and follow that shit. Mm -hmm. They favorite rapper, they mm -hmm. favorite singer, poet, comedian, they will go time and time again and what happens is now, because those same 10, 20 people come in every time, doing the same thing, they don't like you no more. Mm -hmm. Yo, you same thing. Why am I gonna pay $20, 20 times for the same 20 punch? Like you ain't doing nothing different, you ain't changing enough. 
And so once you the audience gets to saying the shit with you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's like y'all in the hood smoking weed and quoting your favorite Friday lines from the movie. <laughs> you can't do that shit at a comedy uh -huh. show, nigga. That mean you bombing. Mm -hmm. You can hit the punchline and the whole audience say it with you, kill yourself. It's yeah. over. <laughs> you just died. On stage, nigga. You be like, the punchline, you be like, and I said, and the whole place go, get out, bitch. You like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> All right, you know what? I shouldn't be here. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like, so that's the thing. That's when you see that. When you see a comic stay in that element, that's the original blueprint of it. Mm -hmm. What you gotta understand, something, just like uh, black people with any entertainment thing they get, they come in there and they, they tweak it and they, they change it and they pizzazz it up. So that's when you start to see these guys, like the Richard Pryors and the Lenny Bruce's, where they go off script. Mm -hmm. They go off script and they, they add that original flavor and that realness to it so it's not verbatim. Mm -hmm. It's not a, in other words, comedy is not meant to be a monologue. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know comics, I was working with two comics last night, and I'm like, damn, they got some good stuff, but they could sell it more. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They're just saying it. Mm -hmm. Sell it. Mm -hmm. Act it out. Go into it. Make it more believable because that same little laugh could be a huge laugh. Okay. You know, and that's what you're always going to be judged at, at the end mm -hmm. of the night. If you take your girl out, like let's say, let's say like a place like Caroline's. Mm -hmm. Caroline's the number one comedy club in the nation, though. But it's an event to go to. Mm -hmm. When you go see somebody at Caroline's, it ain't the ten dollar at the door, couple of beers. Do you two hundred in a hole, two fifty mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with parking? Easy. You know what I mean? It's an event. Mm -hmm. So now. You, anytime you spend money, dude, you judge things differently. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, oh, I love the movie. You see two people see the same movie. Mm -hmm. One dude say, I loved it. One dude say, ah, it was okay. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to them deeper, you find out the one who loved it watched it on bootleg at the crib on DVD. Mm -hmm. Then the one who thought it was all right, oh, he paid full price. He 100 in at the movie theater with shorts. Kids. With shorty, you got yeah. the pretzel bites, mm -hmm. you got the popcorn, Couple the big ass dogs. lots, the large carnivores. <laughs> the nigga, the nigga hunted that. He hated the movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This uh -huh. movie had nothing. To, fuck this movie. Mm -hmm. Cause she ain't getting no ass that night. That's what happened. The numbers Back. ain't add up. But the point is, mm -hmm. when you go somewhere, man, the pressure's on different. When I'm spending my money, I told a dude in the wheelchair. They was talking. And he was saying, what he said something to me to the effect of uh, going and the dude doing the same thing over and over. I said, dude, I said, you got to understand something. Now it's 2020. Mm -hmm. People do what they couldn't do back in the day. Niggas ain't have accessible revenue to go to their entertainment on a continued basis. Okay. Remember back in the day, man, when you went out, it was a big deal. Yeah. It was every now and then, every few months, mm -hmm. a show came, we went out. It ain't like that no more. Now people work for theirs, mm -hmm. and whatever they like, they go to that. Okay. If it's comedy, I'm going to a show every week. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got this other show over here. Yo, you see the shit at the Beacon. Blah, blah, blah. So you're spending your money because you like comedy. Mm -hmm. Now, it just so happens you do that 10 times a month, it's one dude on all 10 shows, same show. You hate this nigga now. Yeah. He's a nice guy, but he's saying the yeah. same shit. <laughs> Black people are demanding, man. Yeah. We're demanding about what we pay for, man. We've mm -hmm. always been that way. Why? Because we had less and we want more. Mm. Understand that. Like, if you have more, there's nothing to give away less. Mm -hmm. White people front they give away money all the time. You could white people call up, complain about shit, and don't really. Get, what, what's this charge? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's an activation fee, thirty five dollars. <laughs> oh, okay. Just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Man, that black lady black still on the call. For that shit. Well, who the fuck is getting the thirty five dollars? Who's activation? I need a name of who activated. <laughs> Cause I could have plugged it up. Yeah. Can I plug it up and you give me thirty five? Can I do that? Then it's bullshit. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Well, let's, let's talk about your top five comics of all time. Damn, that's hard. I don't even know if I could do it. I I, I used to try to do that shit. Mm -hmm. And then, but you as, top as time, I I really top hundred. It's you know what it is relevancy. Mm -hmm. Like. And, and you asked me that in 1988, mm -hmm. I got a five. Okay. You come back in 2005, mm -hmm. got a, maybe a different five. Mm -hmm. and now it's 2020, I might have another different five because what happens is you, you judge him in, in time and what stands the test of time. Okay. So that guy that was in my top five in 88, might not, he might have fell to the side because as time went on, his relevancy and my relatability with him changed over mm -hmm. the years. 
dope. I got older, I got wiser, I got smarter. Now that shit wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When he did it, uh, mm -hmm. then I got wiser and older. Like, wait a minute. That shit was whack. Right, like, like take something simple for it. Like, this is around the seasons, right? Something simple like uh, my elevation with, like, Thanksgiving. You grow up with Thanksgiving. We all grow up with We love Thanksgiving, the pilgrims, all that shit. Then you get middle age in, in their 20s or whatever. Some random ass motherfucker who been reading some books come around and scare the shit out of you with the, 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 the Indians and they killed everybody. Mm -hmm. And why are you celebrating that shit? It ain't for you. And now you, yeah. Yeah. yeah it ain't got a point. Mm -hmm. uh, why the fuck I'm eating this shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and then you fast forward again and then you realize, you know what? I don't have to throw away everything because that's the reason that you did that. Mm -hmm. I can still do this for my own reasons. I, I celebrate Thanksgiving. It ain't about no fucking pilgrims no more. Mm -hmm. That's my unofficial family reunion. Yeah, that's me that. celebrating my grandmother while she's still alive cooking mm -hmm. and the family getting together and all that love in one house. Mm -hmm. and, and, if it, and if it's a day that I can set aside to thank God for certain shit in my life and in my journey, mm -hmm. I can't take a day to do that. Mm. Because they killed some niggas back in the day. I wasn't mm -hmm. dead. I wasn't Facts. dead, man. I don't know them niggas. Mm -hmm. You know, this ain't they TP. This is my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And she cooking the shit out of these chitlins. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something right now. Woo! I know, I know niggas looking right now that don't eat pork. Man, fuck y'all niggas. Let me tell you something. I don't eat pork. Chitlins? I don't eat pork either, <laughs> but you know what I do? Here's the thing with me. I have a piece of uh, smoked ham. Every Thanksgiving and honor my grandma because she she fucking put her foot in her ham. Mm -hmm. She ain't with me no more. My mom's ain't with me. My, my aunt ain't with me. These mm -hmm. are my trio. That's my three amigos of, okay. of the holidays. Mm -hmm. And they're all gone. So Thanksgiving by myself, I still thank God because you can't be mad because when people are gone, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. What about those thousand good things that when they was alive, they did for you and, and was there for you? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like my whole analogy is, as time as you live, things change. Okay. You know what I mean? If I was to like put together a quick five, mm -hmm. I would obviously put in a Lenny Bruce, a Richard Pryor, um, a Red Fox, mm -hmm. um, um, a, a Moms Mabley, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A Flip Wilson, mm -hmm. you know, some shit like that. And that's first tier. And then mm -hmm. I would have to come behind them with the Robin Harris's and mm -hmm. the Bernie Mac, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because time, you know, time changes those things. And each one of those, a lot of people don't, because you might not be privy to the story, it might not recognize a, in your realm of numbers of comedians. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, like Eddie Murphy just did Dolomite. That's a story that needed to be told. Facts. And shout out to Eddie Murphy. He's a fucking mm -hmm. genius. He's a bad motherfucker. And he fucking, you know, he fucking Brooklyn, Long mm -hmm. Island motherfucker. He fuck around, see this, mm -hmm. and be like, why I'm not in the top five. No disrespect, Ed. Mm -hmm. You're a bad motherfucker. But my feelings for Ed my whole life was like, I loved him overall, wholly creative wise. Mm -hmm. Stand up wise, I didn't really, you know what I mean? He didn't shake me. Because he had a small. Well, he, he was he was good, but we you know how people were great in, in the best. It, it, it couldn't touch Rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? He couldn't touch Rich, Red mm -hmm. Fox. Them two niggas at the top. Yeah. Like when you look at them motherfuckers, man, and especially Moms, maybe like her and Flip Wilson, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother door breaking down mm -hmm. right there. That's a whole nother thing. And shout out to Cosby, man. Because mm -hmm. Cosby was the fucking funder of a lot of this shit. Dick Gregory and all mm -hmm. them niggas couldn't do what they do without Cosby being in the position he did. Okay. And financier and all that shit. You mm -hmm. know, so all it, it's a lot of shit in the backdrop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I say it's hard to just go boom five because when you do your research and, and know all the extra little trimmings, mm -hmm. it's like you want to give everybody they do. Okay. You know what I mean? So that, like I said, that five is no disrespect to anybody that name didn't come right mm -hmm. off the, the chip. You know, I'm drinking. You know what I'm saying? I'm top and, five drinker. And on the strength of um the love, how you said, it's like, how you don't get that that hip hop beef and comedy beef? Y'all niggas seem to have like a certain camaraderie oh, oh, with hell each other. No. It's wild beef and comedy. Oh, let's talk it's about wild it. beef and comedy. I done choked a couple of niggas in my day. You did. Think, again, you grow up, you know what I'm saying, and you stop choking niggas. Mm -hmm. So I haven't choked anybody in a very long time. Let, let me just say they that for the record. Let shit. me just say that for the record. I haven't <laughs> choked nobody. In a long time, you, you few people out there, you know who you are. I have uh -huh. not touched you. Mm -hmm. Let your probation officers know. You good. I've, I've stuck to the agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, on some real shit, there's a lot of beef in comedy, man. Uh -huh. um, you know what you have to grow into? You have to grow into this strong soul that, because in comedy, what the, one of our biggest things that causes beef is joke stealing. Okay. Right? 
And so you have to outgrow. I, I, this that's another advice I give to cats. You have to become. You have to become who you are, and not the joke. Mm -hmm. The joke could get stole all day. Mm -hmm. You should not. You have no progress. If somebody can steal one or two of your jokes, go up there before you, mm -hmm. and now you're done. Mm -hmm. You're not a good comedian. Okay. You should be able to go up there. I, I'm and at this point in 28 years in the game, though. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. I cannot go to a comedy show and not hear something of mine. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Mm -hmm. In 2019, 2020, in fucking possible. So I've come to the place where I I, I realize that. Okay. And I come in there with a level head, like okay, whatever, dude. You the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Niggas always pick from the blueprint. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You always pick from the blueprint, and I get it. So now it's like I'm past that. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna argue and beef with nobody over a joke. I'm gonna go and make something better, mm -hmm. or not even talk about that, or go off the top of my head. I have those those capabilities. So why would I sit down and argue and fight with these cats over that now? You know, mm -hmm. as a youngster, you couldn't mm -hmm. tell me this shit. Mm -hmm. oh, I throw them fucking hands on that neck so fast, son. You should see the shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, probation. I didn't do that. It was a very long time ago. Y'all good. Just sitting there, Bobby shop. You like to reflect? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, talk about Four Street Park. Oh, man, did that's you have a, um, a jump shot? I had to develop. Not at first. Uh huh. At first, I was a slasher. I was mm -hmm. like a Pippin type motherfucker. You okay. Know what I'm saying? I'll just give me the rock on that wing. Let me come down there and bomb. And the uh -huh. funny thing was, definitely all I'm lefty, so mm -hmm. definitely had all that side thing. Is that means something? Like mm -hmm. so, I my struggle. I used to be mad at niggas that dunk with two hands. Mm -hmm. Like, how this nigga going up evenly? <laughs> two hands? Yo, I can come up there like this? <laughs> uh -huh. Two hands? <laughs> like, she look like a, <laughs> she look like a deformed baby. <laughs> Try to, could, I mean, I got a couple done, but not uh -huh. in the game. Couldn't do it in the game. Okay. Fourth Street, my thing was the running and the defense, the second thing I got. You know, I had mm -hmm. the little slasher, the, the cardio, the running, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, nigga? Buck fifty, buck seventy, bang, 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 all mm -hmm. that. Then the defense. Then after you know you get older and shit. Now you start growing up. You, now you two hundred pounds. Now you mm -hmm. two twenty five. Now you you fucking honing on that J. Mm -hmm. You know you do MJ. MJ did the same shit. Motherfucker got the later years. That motherfucking jump shot. Yeah. Bump. Like oh, MJ been working on his shit or mm -hmm. something. And that nigga know he about to be number 45. <laughs> <laughs> that man, stupid. That nigga know this 23 is just a year away. <laughs> yeah. number, number 45 of the Wizards, he gonna need a jumper. <laughs> Yo, so if people out here want to get in touch with you, how they get in touch with you, baby? Hey, listen, social media is what it is right now. So on Instagram, I'm Talent The Comedian with a DA, Talent mm -hmm. The Comedian. Uh, Twitter, I'm at It's Just Comedy, my slogan. On mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, New York King Talent or King Talent. Either way, look God up. You know what I mean? Yo, around here, we like to say, if you build a tight foundation, your roof won't collapse. Bang. Sound like a nigga in the building. You dig? Yo, can we get a drop? Yes, sir.